All right, so this is my uh, 2004 Ford F-150. As you can see, it's got over 132,000 miles on it. Uh, I've had it since 06, uh, and I think it had about uh, probably like 28,000 miles on it when I bought it. So the only problem that I've had with this truck are the coil packs, so whatever you want to call them on this thing. It's got the coil on, plug, design, and it's a complete shit design. It really is. At one point, I thought my transmission was going because um, it, it was just really weird. It wasn't, it didn't feel like it was misfiring. It didn't throw codes. It's the thing you have to understand about, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if all cars are the same way, but uh, with this truck, it has to misfire so many times in a short amount of time for it to actually throw a code. Uh, so it could be misfiring like a son of a gun and not actually throw a code. So yesterday, um, and it's been it's been bucking for a while, but it hasn't been that bad. And I've been putting it off because it just pisses me off because I've replaced so many of the packs, uh, especially on cylinder number one, um, or actually cylinder number four. Uh, I mean, uh, I've replaced so many, it's it's insane. So yesterday it was really bad. Um, I limped over, and I went to the auto parts store to get another to get another one. Uh, and we'll talk about these in a second, but we're gonna see if it's still doing it. Oh yeah, it's, I don't know if you'll be able to tell um, with with the, the vibration, but let me try and put it on my steering wheel. I mean, it, it's, it, it's really, 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 really shaking. But as you can see, it's not throwing a code. Uh, so, now I didn't clear I didn't clear anything. Oh. So it was cylinder number three. All right, it's still cylinder number three is, is what it was. Uh, I recommend anybody uh, get these. That uh, If you have OBD2, um, you need to get, you need to get one. This is just the, just the edge tuner. It comes with three can tunes. Um, but it's, it's great for diagnostics. I don't have to take it anywhere and have them plug in the scanner blah 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 so yeah it's still shaking pretty good not as bad as yesterday um, but since I bought it I'm gonna replace it um, and as you can see I mean the RPMs aren't moving it's just shaking I know it there there it goes and we'll make sure it's the same code and I guarantee it is yep so it hasn't thrown a new code it's the same code cylinder 3 misfire so, uh, I mean, it's still kind of raining, but I'm going to try and do it anyway. Um, we're going to change this out right quick because I doubt it's a spark plug. I guarantee it's this. It's a shit design, and uh, we'll go over it in a second. All right, so with these, uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So from the front of the vehicle, back, four and then five through eight. So four is all the way the fuck back there. My thing's on two right now, I was just checking the size, seven millimeter, couldn't remember if it was uh, six or seven. Um, but I have to get at the one that's one further back. And I'm gonna have to pull off that whole assembly right here, like I have in the past, just to get at it. It's kind of bullshit, but it's what you gotta do. So we'll come back. All right, so you probably don't know where to look, but we've got it pulled out. All right, we pulled it out from right in here, okay? Now here's the problem with this fucking design, and this is why I prefer a goddamn distributor and fucking wires. That's what I just pulled out. Let me focus on it. See all that mud on there? You see that shit? It's, it's disgusting. I mean, look at that. That's horrible. That means if I was able to, to crawl, and I'm about to, crawl up there with a fucking flashlight and look in there, it, there's, it's going to be caked with mud. You know, no wonder it can't get a fucking connection. Because these fucking things don't seal. They just don't. I mean, and here's the stock OEM replacement, and it's going to have the same fucking issues. It, it, it's just a crap design. Now, people say, and this is where I want to steer you a different route, people say you need to buy the Ford replacement. Okay, the Ford replacement is like $120 to $130. Okay, if you buy through Ford for the actual Ford OEM 
piece, right? This BDW, which is a Ford OEM, you know, replacement OEM style. It's not one of the cheaper ones that are like uh, 20 and 30 bucks, but these are like uh, $45 new. Okay, military discount. That's me. Uh, I got it for forty dollars and six cents. So here's the here's the deal. Even if this only lasts half as long as a Ford, as an actual Ford one, which they'll tell you the Ford ones will last longer, right? Because it's a it's a much better design. Well, here's the problem. It doesn't matter if it lasts longer because with this design, with shit getting in there and water getting in there, I was driving through puddles yesterday. Norfolk likes to flood out, and it's still raining now it's gonna fail even the Ford one will fail so you're gonna replace it so even if this $40 part only lasts half as long as the Ford one I'm still saving money because it's only $80 instead of $120 and I've gone through two of them instead of one so what a shit design I'm gonna look in there I'm probably gonna blow some compressed air in there because I don't have an air compressor so I've got canned air just to see if I can get the get some gunk out guarantee there's gonna be shit in there before I pop this new one on, and then we'll we'll pick up from there. All right, so got everything back together. It started coming down. That's why I didn't pull the camera back out at the very end of me put it back together. But everything's back together. Battery cable's connected. Um, so that means I'm gonna have to do my freaking backup camera again. I <laughs> think about that, but whatever. Got to do it right. So let's give it a start and uh, see if that made a difference. There's volumes all the way down. I have to. Oh, well, it's all screwed up. Let's give it a shot. Oh, I know you can't tell, but that is smooth. Very smooth. Now, I don't know if this keeps codes. Um, yeah, so it, it cleared it. I didn't think it kept codes in it, but it is running smooth and what's funny is is I was having an issue I don't know if you saw it previously in the video that my door was actually closed and it was saying uh, the door was open I was having an issue with that and I noticed that because um, I went through all my door switches and I couldn't figure it out um, but looks like uh, resetting something reset something you know what I mean pulling the battery cable off because as soon as I put the key in normally I get the alarm because the truck thinks the door is open even though it's closed I didn't get it when I put the key in so that was weird so it's good to see that that's cleared out. Hopefully it doesn't come back anytime soon. Um, but yeah, so it looks like we're good to go. Now, now I'll be straight with you. I did not uh, clean out the uh, the plug hole as, as, well, no, I did. I cleaned it out as best I could, um, but not very well because I don't have an actual air compressor here. And when you, when you turn those cans of air on their side, because I didn't buy one of the expensive ones, when you turn it on its side, it starts, you know, uh, blowing the cold air. Uh, so it'll last uh, probably a while. Um, so I still have to go over this entire truck before I make my trip to Alaska anyway. So when it's up on a lift in a garage is when I'll go through each and every single one of those and, and check them. Uh, the only work I haven't done in this truck myself is changing the plugs because I didn't want to take that chance. Um, you know of, of having one of them break. I just didn't feel comfortable about it But no matter how much I bitch about those those coil packs um, The coil on plug whatever whatever they're called no matter how much I bitch about them because I've had to change them often uh, Now that it's happened so much in the first few times I had to have friends help me just because uh, I didn't want to I didn't know how to if I, if I could disconnect all of that shit in the back To get to it how easy it really was uh, But as you I mean literally this took me with doing the videos, it took me like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? With pulling the camera out or the phone out and, and taking video, it took me 10 minutes to change out that one uh, coil. So out of everything, I've never had a problem with this truck, never. I beat the shit out of this truck. I drive it like a race car half the time. I mean, I, I have bought more sets of tires for this fucking truck than, than I remember. Um, I really do, I beat the shit out of it. So to have that be the only thing, I'm just fine with that. Transmission's fine. I've only changed the tranny fluid and the and the the diff and the transfer. I've only changed those fluids once uh, at about 100,000. That's when I went through and I did. I overhauled everything. 
I've changed the brakes on this truck twice. I have to do it again uh, here pretty soon. Uh, again, because I drive like a crazy man. So, I'm, I'm telling you, all in all, very happy with this truck. Other than Ford's shit design with those things, and then their shit design with the plugs, everything else is good. I haven't had any of the issues other people have had. So, that's it. Oh, and by the way, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Peace. So I want to do a, a quick addendum uh, to this right quick uh, because whenever I peruse uh, the Ford F-150 forums, you know, everybody, everybody doesn't know. They're like, oh, my truck is shaking. What is it? Is my transmission. Uh, just like I used to uh, before I replaced my first coil-on pack. I thought it was my transmission going. Um, I didn't even think that it was misfiring because the truck never threw a code. Again, like I said, it has to be so bad. It has to be misfiring so much in a minute amount of time for it to actually throw a code that it could be bucking. And I mean really bucking. I've been to the point where it was really bucking and it still didn't throw a code. It's so weird how that works. Um, but then when people are like, okay, well, it is misfiring... They go through the whole process of actually pulling uh, a plug once they've gone somewhere or maybe they have a scanner and they figure out which cylinder it is. They'll, they'll, they'll pull the pack, they'll pull the plug, and they'll look at it. Um, and I just want to make sure you guys understand that if you have one of these trucks, I think it's all the way back to probably uh, 96 or 97 uh, on up. And I don't know when they fixed it. I don't know if they fixed it in 09 or not. I'm assuming they probably have a better design for the 09s and up. Um, but if you have one of these trucks and it's misfiring, I would go straight to, uh, the pack. I wouldn't bother pulling the plug. Um, I, I mean, there's, there's really no reason to, because nine times out of 10, it's going to be that pack. If you're not at the point where you need to change those plugs and we're talking, you know, what is it? 70,000 or a hundred thousand miles, uh, before you need to, before you need to change those plugs. Um, you know, it's, it's probably not a plug. And if you did change them at 70,000 or a hundred thousand, um, or wh wherever it says to change them at, you've got that much time again, uh, before you really need to start worrying about it being the plugs. So I just want to throw that out there, um, that it's probably your pack. I guarantee it's your pack. Um, so just change it. And in fact, uh, before I make my trip to Alaska, I'm going to ensure that I have like two spare packs in the truck with me. Now, I literally, for probably the past three months, I've been driving with it misfiring um, slightly. Uh, is that a good thing? No, of course not. I don't, I don't advocate anybody drive a vehicle uh, that's misfiring. Uh, is it going to hurt anything with the amount that it was misfiring? Not really, um, but I don't advocate it. Uh, I just hate having to spend money on those and replacing them. Like I've, like I've said that, that I've done it so often, it just makes me mad. Um, so normally I wait till it's really bad and then I replace it um, just to try and get that much more use out of that same pack. So just my thoughts on it. Um, you replace it right away if you want to. <laughs> totally. I mean, that would be the right thing to do. Uh, but I wouldn't bother pulling plugs uh, if you're not at a point where you need to replace them, uh, especially on these engines with that plug design. So there's, there's things that you, steps you need to take to, to do them properly to ensure that that's not going to break on you. Uh, you know, the, 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 the threads on those fucking plugs are like that long. It's pretty, it's pretty insane. So just my thoughts, replace the coil pack, guarantee that'll fix it. And you saw it took me less than 10 minutes to replace it. So if you replace it and that's not the problem, okay, then go ahead and, and pull the plug and go from there. But for $40 and 10 minutes of work and not taking the chance of breaking a plug, start there. It's just easiest and if the pack was good and it is the plug well then you got a spare pack because uh, like I said on long trips I recommend having extra packs I mean I literally drove 
from San Diego back to Virginia Beach, uh, and it was misfiring. And I didn't even really know it was misfiring because at high RPMs, uh, you won't feel it as much. There's a, there's a sweet spot around 50, 55 miles an hour where, where these trucks have pretty much a dead zone anyway. It's a combination of the transmission and the RPMs at that speed. Um, so they kind of have a dead spot anyway, but that's where, it'll, where you'll feel it. And if you're not really paying attention and it's misfiring at that dead spot, which is where it's going to do it when it's just starting, you're never going to even know it. Um, and like I said, when you're at the higher RPMs, it's not even going to misfire uh, if it's very slight. And if it is, you're not going to feel it. The truck's not going to tell you. Um, just, I, I've been, you know, I drive this truck daily and I've been doing that since probably 08, uh, 09. So I know it very well. So just my thoughts. Don't waste your time on plugs if you don't have to. Happy Thanksgiving.